De ces beaux jours, il nous faut te dire que ton demain je ne sais. Que reste-t-il des billets qui Ladies and gentlemen, as the award ceremony is about to begin, may I invite you to take your seats, please. May I also request that you switch your mobile phones and other electronic devices to the silent mode if you have not already done so. Thank you. Un paysage si bien caché dans un nuage, le chevisage de mon passé. I wish you Upon a summertime, if you recall, we stopped beside a little flower stall. A bunch of bright forget me nots was all I'd let you buy me. Once upon a summertime, just like today, we laughed the happy afternoon away and stole a kiss in every street cafe. Minister for Defence, Dr. Ng Ing Hin, NUS Chairman, NUS President, Award recipients, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and a warm welcome to the National University of Singapore's University Awards 2020. My name is Nadia, a fourth year student from the School of Design and Environment. I'll be your Master of Ceremonies for this evening. Thank you for taking time to join us on this special occasion. We also want to acknowledge members of the NUS community, as well as colleagues, family, and friends of the award recipients tuning in online. In fact, one of our faculty members, Associate Professor Ashley St. John from Duke NUS Medical School is joining us this evening back home from Durham, North, Car North Carolina. The University Awards honours the best in education, research and service. We acknowledge and celebrate members of the NUS community who advance the University's mission of excellence in education, research and service to Singapore and the wider community. To start off this evening, I would like to invite NUS President, Professor Tan Ng Chai, to share with us his thoughts on this very special occasion. Professor Tan, please.
Minister for Defence, Dr. Ng Eng Heng, NUS Chairman, Award recipients, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to everyone and welcome to University Awards 2020. My thanks to everyone joining us in person here in the auditorium, as well as those watching on YouTube and Zoom. In today's world, being present physically has taken a whole new meaning. We have all come to appreciate occasions such as this, participating in a shared experience with others where we can personally engage with the feelings, emotions and energies across the room. Thank you for being here. 2020 has been marked by the COVID-19 crisis. It is said that crisis can bring out the best in humanity. At the same time, crisis can also accentuate weaknesses, vulnerabilities and cracks. What certainly holds true is that the way we respond to COVID-19 reflects who and how we are and what we stand for as an institution. On this count, I must say that NUS has held out very well indeed. When the crisis broke out, more than 1,300 NUS students were overseas on various exchange and academic programs, all of whom had subsequently returned to Singapore or to their home countries safely. As a global and highly interconnected university, every aspect of our operations has been disrupted by COVID-19. Yet, on top of the additional work, stress, worries and uncertainties, and in spite of having to implement changes and measures at lightning speed. The university's utmost commitment to excellence has been evident and shines true. NUS did not let up in our efforts to deliver an excellent education to our students whose health, well-being and educational experience remain our priority. COVID-19 is a sudden pandemic that caught the world unguarded and necessitated the rapid and full absorption, adoption of e-learning from April. Even till today, we do not have full knowledge about the disease and its treatment, spread and long-term effects. Invariably, our educators face real, teething issues such as communications and network connectivity that come with having to redesign module delivery and so on. For a candid first-hand account of what our faculty have had to go through, do read Associate Professor Chris McMoran's commentary titled Online Teaching Doesn't Have to Suck for Students or Educators. Through it all, our educators' commitment to delivering excellent education has defined the student experience. I'm pleased to share the pleasant and sometimes surprising outcome. In spite of the disruptions faced, student feedback scores were higher. As compared to previous semesters, there is appreciation for the hard work and dedication of our educators. Text analysis of qualitative comments revealed that students had a positive perception of how our academics have handled the pandemic. Students cited well-adapted materials for e-learning, excellent use of technology, engagement and care for student morale, and the options for assessment and content delivery, as well as areas which they are greatly satisfied with. In this month, NUS educators have honed their new skills, experimented 
with new technologies and dabbled into new ways to encourage active learning, made possible by online teaching. All this to make students' learning experiences fun, enriching and engaging. Let me share a few examples. With strict safe distancing measures in place, access to teaching laboratories were limited. In place of a lab session, Associate Professor Ho Han Kiet from the Department of Pharmacy adopted a cooking show approach using demonstration videos. Students could see how an experiment can be designed to test the hypothesis that homicides can occur in the cell-based model. The experiment consisted six distinct snapshots, and each step features a running commentary to describe the process. Data generated from the experiment was given to students. Students write up a lab report on their observations and conclusions derived from their data analysis. Although a physical lab session could not be conducted, Hankiet's innovative improvisation achieved the intended learning outcome, that is, the theoretical aspects of experimental design and data analysis. The students and professors were home or hostel bound. Professor So Chong Hao, who teaches physics, took experiments to students' homes. Through innovative use of everyday materials, which we have easy access to, such as matchsticks, Chong Hao got his students to do experiments. And he demonstrated them during his Zoom tutorials. So Chong Hao's version is a cook with me cooking show. Chong Hao had even posted some lab apparatus to his students so that together they could do experiments simultaneously and online. On this note, I would like to say thank you to all my wonderful teaching colleagues. Well done. In spite of COVID-19, you have upped your game to ensure a high-quality learning experience that is fitting of an NUS education. In research, the university's research engines continue to fire. And NUS researchers stepped up quickly to be at the forefront of COVID-19 research, contributing to the national and international fight against COVID-19. CPAS, a kit that detects whether someone has antibodies which neutralizes the coronavirus, has become the first of its kind to receive authorization from the US FDA. CPAS was invented by a team led by Emerging Infectious Disease Program at Duke NUS and co-developed with biotech company Genscript Biotech Corporation as well as ASTAR's Diagnostic Development Hub. Other rapid diagnostic projects are currently underway. The Institute for Health Innovation and Technology, or iHealth Tech, developed a fast and portable microfluidic micro PCR point of care diagnostic system called Epidex that enables on site screening for COVID 19 to be completed within one hour. Another project is a point of care testing platform known as Envision or Enzyme Assisted Nano Complexes for Visual Identification of Nucleic Assets, developed by iHealth Tech and Yonglulin School of Medicine. Envision is highly sensitive as the ability to operate at room temperature and is able to generate signals that are readily quantified by smartphones 
and other existing modalities. In a quest to develop effective therapeutic treatments, researchers at the NUS N.1 Institute for Health have developed a groundbreaking artificial intelligence platform known as Identity AI, which is short for Identifying Infectious Disease Combination Therapy with Artificial Intelligence. Pardon the pun. Identify AI can identify optimal drug combination therapies at unprecedented speeds. Beyond vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics, other contributions by NUS researchers including, include designing nasal swaps and epidemiological modelling, as well as weekly science reports by the Sorsui Hawk School of Public Health and combating misinformation by the new Centre for Trusted Internet and Community. NUS experts also write regular commentaries to the media and have even developed comic strips to help the public make sense of the situation. Most notably, COVID-19 has brought about unprecedented collaboration amongst researchers. NUS researchers have gone beyond their departments and schools to leverage expertise across disciplines, institutions, industry, and government agencies to find solutions. One striking example is the multidisciplinary team of NUS researchers working with doctors from the National University Hospital to develop a shield known as the droplet and aerosol reducing tent, or DUT. DUT is a portable tent-like structure that can be placed around the patient's head when healthcare staff perform procedures like intubation or extubation. It can lessen the infection risk of such droplet and aerosol-generating procedures by pro providing an extra layer of protection between the healthcare staff and the patient. That is now being tested and used across hospitals in Singapore. The world continues to face many challenges, and NUS research must evolve and adapt to a post-COVID-19 world, where governments and industry are seeking to improve public health, build resilience and self-reliance. Academic researchers are in a unique position to bring about research insights. It is an opportune time for researchers to identify new avenues for high impact innovative research that will emerge from the pandemic. I'm proud of how NUS administration and campus infrastructure have too stepped up remarkably in an integrative way to deliver an excellent state-of-the-art integrated pandemic suite. Now, this system is the critical component in our efforts to mitigate COVID-19 risks on campus and to facilitate safe teaching, operations and interactions. By now, many in NUS would be familiar with the NUS Digital Safe Pass. It is uniquely, distinctively NUS, without which one cannot buy food, attend class, ride the shuttle bus, or enter libraries or sports facilities. The NUS SAFE system, developed in-house by our very own NUS IT, is one of the most sophisticated, precise, and comprehensive COVID mitigation systems, probably not replicated in any campus in the world. NUS SAFE is a seamless 
an application that integrates information feeds from health and travel declarations, class, meetings, and visitor registries, people movements, and whereabouts on campus. Ad hoc approvals for campus access with management policy decisions governing zoning, shifts, and timetables. This system allows us to have a sensing of population density and also facility usage. It generates alerts on health and safety compliance and breaches. It also trades close contacts expeditiously, should there be a need to do so. Above all, NUS Safe has multiple layers of security provisions to ensure that the system is cyber secure. Today, within Singapore, NUS is one of the few places where staff and students can walk in and out of classrooms and buildings without having to lodge each entry and exit with safe entry. NUS Saved is a sterling example of NUS officers coming together, working with NUS IT to harness intelligent tools, the latest technology and infrastructure to deliver an effective, excellent and user-centric solution that we are all immensely proud of. On this note, I must commend Tommy, Shiming, and the NUS IT team for their outstanding work. Some of you may have read about the adverse impact of COVID-19 on universities around the world. Several institutions have had to resort to drastic measures such as culling programs and following staff to cut costs. But here in NUS, we are fortunate to be standing on strong grounds. But beyond coping well with the present realities, we in NUS must take opportunity to innovate and position ourselves to continue in the path of excellence for the future. COVID-19 has driven us to, to search, learn, and discover new tools and ways of doing things. This positive momentum of openness and appetite for exploration and change can be channeled towards scaling the next peaks of excellence. The NUS senior management has been thinking hard about the future of NUS education and how we can educate and empower our graduates to be adaptable, resilient and innovative so that they can thrive in a complex, uncertain world. NUS plans to take the lead in spearheading interdisciplinary, inter interdisciplinary integrative university education. Our graduates will learn to harness and integrate knowledge, skills and experiences across domains so that they can deliver greater value in their future job roles. NUS will thus be reforming our educational model by moving from a traditional disciplinary approach towards one that is flexible, broad-based, and interdisciplinary. Exciting plans are underway. The first major piece is the proposed College of Humanities and Sciences, or CHS, to be jointly established by the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and the Faculty of Science. CHS will admit its inaugural cohort of 2,100 students next year. Students admitted to the college will belong to both FASS and FOS and will have access to the programs 
and facilities in both faculties. CHS students will read a common curriculum, which will form one third of the degree program. They will be exposed to intellectual approaches across humanities, social sciences, science and mathematics, as well as to interdisciplinary elements and connections which are reinforced through fieldwork, internships and experiential learning. The general education component of the common curriculum will also feature modules on artificial intelligence, quantitative reasoning, and design thinking. These are highly current 21st century skills that are applicable across all industries. The CHS education model is a flexible and student-centric one. Students can pursue any combinations of majors, second majors, and minors across science and arts and social sciences based on their interests, aptitude, and career aspirations. Such flexibility is unprecedented in Singapore's higher education context, and this will open many new opportunities for our students. CHS will be a big and bold first step ahead for NUS education. In the near future, NUS will be rolling out further initiatives to deliver an even more excellent and transformative education to benefit all our students. I will share the plans with you when they are ready. So please stay tuned. Now this evening, we are gathered here to recognize the sterling accomplishments of our award winners and to celebrate with them. To our award winners, the NUS family is immensely proud of each one of you. Your dedication towards honing your craft and reaching for excellence in education, research and service serves as an inspiration to the NUS community. My heartiest congratulations to all of you. In closing, I would like to reiterate that while the world may be changing rapidly, the NUS mission, vision and values have not changed. NUS will always bear the hallmark of excellence as we seek to educate, to inspire and to transform. Together and as one NUS, we are on a journey to become a leading global university shaping the future. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tan. Tonight, the university is honouring seven individuals from our NUS community for their achievements and contributions in the following categories. Outstanding educator, young researcher, university research recognition, and outstanding service. We begin by presenting the first award for the evening, the Outstanding Educator Award. This award is conferred on faculty who have excelled as educators. It honours those who have engaged and inspired our students in our quest for knowledge. To introduce the two recipients of this year's Outstanding Educator Award, please welcome on stage NUS Senior Deputy President and Provost, Professor Ho Tekwa. Professor Ho, please. Good evening. It's a little cold somehow in the room, but it's okay. So we'll try. I'm honored to read the citation for the Outstanding Educator Awards. First, I want to mention that this award is now a popularity contest. So the highest rating, not necessarily, will win the award. It's the first thing. It recognizes our colleagues who have inspired our students to be passionate learners. So the first awardee is Professor Ho Han Kiet. Hanke teaches a phenomenal scientific inquiry course unlike any other at NUS. 
As she then said, if there was a grade to be given for his enthusiasm and teaching skill, it would be an A+. Plus. Uh, a plus is not easy to get. You probably know only 1% will get A plus for students, but professor, I don't know. Hanke has the exceptional ability to constantly and creatively adapting his teaching to the evolving needs of the students. For example, in Chai just mentioned about the cooking thing is really amazing. He seamlessly weaves concept and application and find ways to teach abstract and theoretical concept in a relatable way. Hanke also has a passion for youth leadership and development and has helped many students with their personal and intellectual growth. A student say, he has been a fatherly figure who has pushed us to do our very best. I've truly never met a prof or teacher quite like him. Please join me in honoring Hanke's significant contribution to education with the Outstanding Educator Award. Citation for Associate Professor Stephen Lim. <laughs> Stephen has a motto, no matter the impending challenges, keep your aspiration alive. His student appreciates Stephen's passion and dedication as an educator. They commented that he leaves them with something meaningful beyond the classroom a solid grounding in the discipline, an abiding sense of curiosity, the passion for discovery, and the inspiration to push boundaries. Stephen is also a demanding and challenging educator. He encourages independent thinking and asks his students to critically apply research knowledge and skills in complex scenarios. Stephen's exemplary teaching impacts other educators as well through the publication of pedagogical work in journals and his leadership as chair of the NUS Teaching Academy. Please join me in honoring Associate Professor Stephen Lim as an outstanding educator in 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ho. We now move on to the next two categories which recognize research excellence at NUS. The Young Researcher Award is conferred on researchers below the age of 40, whose work show great premise in extending the frontiers of knowledge in their respective fields. The University Research Recognition Award recognizes researchers of global standing with a strong track record of impactful research and who have positioned NUS at the forefront of their areas of expertise. Introducing the recipients of this year's Young Researcher Award and University Research Recognition Award is NUS Deputy President, Research and Technology, Professor Chen Suhan. Professor Chen, please. I'm extremely honored to read the citations for the recipient of this year's Young Researcher Award and University Research Recognition Award. Uh, before we start, I do want to take this opportunity to thank the award committee. Many of them are actually here today. Thank you for all your hard work, working with me, reading through numerous nominations. I want to say nice of hard work, but yes, hours of hard work, if not that, in coming up with and carefully select these uh, award winners. Thank you all. Your time and effort are very much appreciated. The recipients of this year's Young Researcher Award are Assistant Professor Feng Jia Shi and Associate Professor Ashley St. John. Professor Feng Jiaxi, please. <laughs> Professor Feng Jiaxi is a brilliant scholar who works in artificial intelligence, computer vision, and machine learning. With five years, within five years of joining NUS, Jiaxi has received recognition through his International Best Paper Awards and his wins at international challenges. He has also secured multiple research grants from AI companies. Just a research goal is to keep pushing the boundary to enhance computers, enable computers to learn knowledge just as fast as humans. His future plans are ambitious and they include artificial general intelligence, not just AI, just AI for specific tests such as speech recognition or face recognition, but artificial general intelligence 
just like what humans can do. That said, Joshua has shared with me that along the line of pushing for artificial general intelligence, he remains human in the sense that he says to me, the only thing that can be, cannot be replaced by AI is the humanity that he has with his students. That's why he often takes his students out for coffee, talking about research and build their relationship. For that, I applaud you. As you continue pushing the boundary of AI, you remain as a human. So with that, please join me in congratulating Assistant Professor Feng Jia Shi on winning this Young Researcher Award this year. Next, Professor Ashley St. John. So, as a viral immunologist, Ashley studies immune systems and their responses to viral infections. For example, one of her studies on vascular leakage in dengue has led to a clinical trial of a novel therapeutic strategy. She has also demonstrated how mothers pass out allergies, allergies to their children, and with that, she has published a science paper and has opened new avenues for tackling infant allergies. But actually, it's more than just an outstanding researcher. She's a superb mentor and role model for her students. She shared with me that one of the things that she remembered the most during her research journey is not so much about how many papers, how many grants that she wants. It says she's one night, one of her trainees calling her from the lab, saying that, oh, Professor St. John, we have found something that's great. And the rest was history. Everything else became this science paper that I just mentioned. And to Ashley, she says to me that it was not the, destiny, it was not the destination, rather it was a journey that's important. So Ashley is also an avid science communicator, regularly invited to share her insights with national and international media. We're here very, very proud to present Young Research Award to Associate Professor Ashley St. John. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on to the next category. I'm also very, very pri uh, privileged to read the citation of the recipients of this year's University Research Recognition Award. The winners are Professor Dario Campena and Professor Dang Jing Song. Professor Campena, please. <laughs> Professor Dario Campena is the Mrs. Li Gong Chen Chair in Advanced Cellular Therapy at Yong Luling School of Medicine. He was the first to establish this highly accurate methods to measure leukemia. And with that deep knowledge, he went on to develop ways to harness the body's immune cells to fight cancer cells. In conventional cancer therapy, the side effects can be serious. But by redirecting our own immune systems against leukemia, Professor Campena has developed a more effective and yet less toxic uh, treatment. His lab engineered a special chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR, by joining together important pieces of our immune systems. These CARs help redirect our own immune T cells to destroy leukemia cells with great precision. Professor Campana's CAR construct is a critical component of the first gene therapy that has been approved by United States FDA for cancer treatment. Dara shared with me that all of this was inspired by a conference that he attended in the 1990s you must be like a high school student back then, right? Yes, yes, okay. Um, the conference that he attended, there was a paper on a child who was cured, whose cancer was cured by borrowing cells from her, his uh, sister. At that time, it was not very effective. In fact, it was a little bit risky, but that planted the seed in Darius' head. Since then, after 15 years of up and downs, Darius has developed his own therapy, and now is, well, as I mentioned, approved by US uh, FDA, but also widely market and has helped many, many patients. So his advice to all of us is that, uh, if you don't mind me quoting you, don't be discouraged by failure, don't take no for an answer, and pay attention at conferences. 
So, uh, Professor Kanzi, um, uh, Campena is an elected member of American Society of Clinical Investigation, American Association of Physicians. He has been cited more than 35,000 times, and most recently awarded the Jacob and Louis Gabby Awards in Biotechnology and Medicine. Tonight, we're very, very glad to add one more accolade to his very, very long list of honors for an extraordinary scientist like Dario. Congratulations, Professor Dario Campina on the University Research Recognition Award. Okay, so now we come to Professor Dong Jing Song, please. <laughs> Professor Dong Jing Song is one of the leading researchers in the field of formal methods. By that, he means he can read your code line by line, not him, but his uh, methods, so that he can show that your code is safe and secure, in which he has led a, a research team to develop auto automatic verification system, PAT, or Process Analysis Toolkit. PAT, which received the 20-year ICFEM Most Influential System Award, has already attracted thousands of registered users from hundreds of organizations in over 150 countries, and has been successfully applied in security critical systems, blockchain, smart cities, and sports analytics. We'll come back to that later. Jin Song um, has also recently co-founded a company called Dependable Intelligence and has developed the state-of-the-art trustworthy machine learning system, Silas, which provides solutions toward explainable and verified AI. Jin Song has successfully supervised 25 PhD students and many of them have already become tenure professors at world's leading universities. Besides sitting on the editorial board of a number of international leading journals, Jin Song is also a member of the advisory board of the Formal Methods Europe and also fellow of the Institute of Engineering Australia. All of that said, Jin Song shared with me this story. Apparently using this system, PAT, he was able to develop a model how you win games, tennis games, with all these different strategic analytics. And he himself is actually a competitive tennis player, uh, representing NUS uh, staff team, I guess, for 22 years already. Uh, even more so, he has used the same strategy coming out from his system, PAT, to train his own three sons. Each of them has already reached what, number one national ranking in tennis in both Singapore and Australia. So, uh, Jin Song, I also play tennis, but I'm not competitive. Maybe I should start reading your papers on PAT, and maybe one day you can show me how it works. So with that, we congratulate Professor Jin Song on winning the University Research Recognition Award this evening. Congratulations. Thank you, Professor Chen. We would now like to invite back on stage NUS President, Professor Tan Eng Chai, to present the awards to the recipients of this year's Outstanding Educator, Young Researcher, and University Research Recognition Awards. Professor Tan, please. Receiving the 2020 Outstanding Educator Award are Associate Professor Ho Han Ket, Department of Pharmacy, Faculty of Science. Associate Professor Lim Wee Hoon, Stephen, Department of Psychology, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. <laughs> Receiving the 2020 Young Researcher Award this evening are Assistant Professor Feng Tia Shi, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Faculty of Engineering. <laughs> the 
Associate Professor Ashley St. John, Program in Emerging Infectious Diseases, Duke NUS Medical School and Department of Microbiology and Immunology, Yonglulin School of Medicine. As Associate Professor St. John is unable to join us in person this evening, Professor Chen Suhan will be accepting the trophy on her behalf. Professor Chen, please. this award. Receiving the 2020 University Research Recognition Award are Professor Dario Campagna, Department of Pediatrics, Yonglulin School of Medicine. Professor Dong, Jin, Professor Dong Jin Song, Department of Computer Science, School of Computing. Thank you, Professor Tan. The final award to be presented this evening is the prestigious Outstanding Service Award. This award recognizes and honors individuals who have distinguished themselves by their sustained contributions in serving the university and society. Associate Professor Benjamin Ong, NUS Senior Vice President, Health Education and Resources, will be sharing with us the achievements and contributions of this year's Outstanding Service Award recipient. But before he does so, let us watch a short video on the winner. I've always wanted to be a doctor. I mean, since I was, must be seven years old, I always thought it would be such a wonderful blessing to be able to help people. Every patient that we have the privilege of being um, and trust it. We hold it precious. As physicians, we are stewards, you know, to deliver care to them and constantly trying to do the best for patients. In my career, the most significant one was when I moved into leadership. That was probably the most difficult decision uh, that I had to make when um, I was asked to be CEO of KK, Women's and Children's Hospital, because that was, you know, really going out of my comfort zone. There was a wonderful convergence of purpose and mission uh, to improve the lives of our patients. So that entails not just delivering the best health care possible today, but really pushing constantly for improvements improved clinical outcomes, improved patient experience. That's where a health system benefits from a close partnership with a medical school. A few examples, a uh, very current one is COVID-19. The first patient in Singapore uh, came to SGH on January 23rd and immediately when we knew of this novel virus in Singapore, the team in Duke and US uh, and the team in Sing Health came together to look at a whole gamut of projects, uh, right from you know how do you diagnose earlier, how do you work on the vaccine, right? I could go on with the number of projects uh, that we've done, you know, together in COVID-19. So you put the two together, it's extremely complementary. That's what makes it a vibrant academic medical centre. And now we are solidifying that partnership uh, with the launch of an academic medicine innovation institute. 
My dad used to say, you have one life, live it well, and what better way to live it than to um, help others. That's always my very simple approach to life, keeping the motivation simple. It gives you the energy and I would say tenacity to continue doing what you feel is the right thing to do. Professor Ong, please. Professor Ivy Ng, the Outstanding Service Award. Ivy, you're supposed to stand, actually, I think. <laughs> Professor Ivy Ng is an inspirational, transformative clinical leader whom I have had the privilege to work with and know for much of my own career. Her contributions throughout her illustrious career have certainly shaped much of Singapore's healthcare landscape. Ivy sets the bar for all of us and the university is privileged to acknowledge her accomplishments today. A pediatric geneticist by training, Ivy has held multiple leadership positions at the KK Women's and Children's Hospital before she was appointed Chief Executive Officer from 2004 to 2012. During her stint as CEO, Ivy led the expansion of KKH, a hospital known then for specialising in paediatrics, neonatology, obstetrics and gynaecology, to one that actually comprehensively covers most aspects of women's healthcare, from tertiary services to managing high-risk conditions in women and children. Currently the group CEO of Singh Health, IP oversees Singapore's largest healthcare cluster, consisting of four hospitals, eight polyclinics, three community hospitals, and five national specialty centres. Singh Health's development and growth have been dramatic under her inspirational stewardship. As the largest public healthcare hospital cluster in the country. Singh Health accounts for 50% of patient visits to the public sector, providing the full spectrum of care from community to quaternary services. Ivy leads by example and is a strong believer on the benefits of academic medicine. She spearheaded Singh Health's academic medicine partnership with Duke NUS Medical School, which brought together research, education and clinical care to develop better healthcare solutions. This partnership is a hallmark of Sing Health's success. Ivy also continues to teach medical students and residents as clinical professor at the Yong Lin School of Medicine, as well as at Duke NUS. She still serves as a senior consultant in pediatric genetics at KKH. For her immense contributions to healthcare in Singapore, Ivy was awarded the Public Administration Gold Medal in 2011 by the Singapore government. She was also named Woman of the Year by Herbal Magazine in 2012. NUS was founded in 1905 to serve the local community, and this prestigious award honours those who have stood out for their dedication to serve. We are therefore deeply privileged to recognise Professor Ivy Ng's outstanding accomplishments and contributions to the university, country and society with the National University of Singapore's outstanding Service Award. Thank you, Professor Ong. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to invite NUS Chairman, Mr. Xie Fu Hua, on stage to present the award to this year's recipient of the Outstanding Service Award. Mr. Xie, please. Receiving the Outstanding Service Award this evening is Professor Ivy Ng Sui Lian, Group CEO of Singapore Health Services and Duke NUS Governing Board Member. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We have come to the end of the award ceremony. Once again, our heartiest congratulations to all our award recipients. We hope that all of you and our guests who joined us in person and online enjoyed the evening. Stay well and stay safe. Thank you. Once upon a summertime with you. May I invite the award recipients, their guests, and NUS Senior Management to the group photography session in the foyer. Thank you.